As the first part of their capstone studio, the senior class of the University of Massachusetts Amherst Bachelor of Landscape Architecture program studied the history, present, and future of Greenway Park planning in and around the city of Boston. We visited, photographed, and drew historical and current Greenway landscapes and considered how they had helped shape the urban fabric of the city during different eras of its development. We began with four historical case studies, including Frederick Law Olmsted's Riverway, part of the Emerald Necklace Park system developed in the 19th century. The Charles River Embankment, or Esplanade, first proposed in the 1870s and completed in the 20th century. The Southwest Corridor Park, built along the corridor of the Orange Line in the 1980s. And the Rose Kennedy Greenway, part of Boston's Big Dig project, completed in 2008. These initial case studies served as historical precedents for our studio's consideration of what Greenway Park design for Boston should be for the 21st century. Boston is the cultural and economic center of Massachusetts and New England. Steeped in history and home to some of the world's leading innovators in technology, education, and science, Boston combines the past, present, and future to create the unique composition of the city. The Boston area, considered in this studio to include the cities of Boston and Cambridge and the town of Brookline, has been at the forefront of urban greenway design and development since the 1870s. At that time, the growing city of Boston annexed neighboring towns, such as Dorchester and Roxbury, expanding the political boundaries of the city. City officials recognized the need to develop new parks within their expanded municipal boundaries. In 1878, the Park Commission asked Frederick Law Olmsted to design his first park for Boston, the Back Bay Fence. This landscape became the first element of the series of connected parks and parkways later described as the Emerald Necklace. The Emerald Necklace was completed in the 1890s and was the most comprehensive park system ever designed by Olmsted. Of particular interest for our studio is the Riverway, or Muddy River Improvement, section of the Emerald Necklace. In 1880, Olmsted altered Boston's plan for connecting the Back Bay Fence to Jamaica Pond, relocating it to take advantage of the Valley of the Muddy River. The result was what urban historians consider the first urban greenway in the United States. From this beginning, Boston has continued to innovate in greenway park design for over 100 years, the Rose Kennedy Greenway being the latest example. Our analysis included work in the studio, where we prepared plans, sections, GIS maps, and historical views. We laid out our work as a storyboard for this video and wrote narrative text to accompany the images. We also examined the latest innovation in greenway planning for Boston, an ongoing effort for a proposed emerald network of bikeways and greenways that would connect to the existing parks and park corridors in the metropolitan area. These maps show the proposed network of green corridors connecting existing greenways and parks over five acres. Frederick Law Olmsted's work designing parks in Boston began in 1878 when the Boston Park Commissioners asked him to come up with a plan for the area where the Muddy River drained into the Charles River at the west end of a new neighborhood called Back Bay. The site had been a tidal estuary and was heavily polluted and prone to flooding. The original 1876 plan called for a linear park that would have connected directly over Mission Hill to Jamaica Pond, which was also intended to be a part of the new park system. In 1878, however, Olmsted designed an unprecedented new public landscape, one that evoked the tidal estuary the area had once been. In its appearance and its function, the Back Bay Fens was something new, a naturalistic landscape that served as landscape infrastructure to control flooding and improve water quality. In 1880, Olmsted then proposed connecting the Fens to Jamaica Pond by moving the corridor park over to take advantage of the valley of the Muddy River. By using the existing natural systems, topography, and hydrology, Olmsted created a new kind of corridor park, a greenway that was completely unlike what had been previously proposed. The design went through several revisions. This is the final 1891 plan. The riverway took advantage of the natural river corridor, improved water quality, 
helped control flooding, and also provided new transportation infrastructure for carriages, horses, and a new electric rail line. In other words, the first greenway of its type was also an early example of landscape infrastructure. The goals of the Riverway project were, according to Frederick Law Olmsted, to transform the river, which was an open sewer, from a public nuisance into a community asset, improve flow and water holding capacity, and to create a linear park. The Greenway features a re-engineered version of an existing hydrological system. The park is structured around the natural flow of water from Jamaica Pond, a natural kettle pond in the largest body of fresh water in Boston, through the Riverway and down to the new Back Bay Fens Park. From there, the water flowed into the Charles River. Park visitors today often think it is a preserved natural river, but careful design and extensive construction were required to create this impression. Construction was carried out mainly between 1890 and 1895, and the river corridor was extensively regraded in places. In some cases, neighboring buildings were demolished, and sewer outfalls were eliminated or relocated. The riverway was then planted with a lush shrub understory, as well as shade trees and herbaceous vegetation along the water's edge. The plants thrived, and important views to important buildings such as Christ Church and Brookline were framed. The design of the riverway, as with many corridor parks, is especially important to analyze through section drawings. The careful separation of different circulation types, including pedestrian, cars, and the green line of Boston's T can be seen. This section shows how the intersecting traffic of the surrounding city is carried over the valley corridor, here on the Longwood Avenue Bridge, allowing the park and its user to remain undisturbed below. One of the most important changes to the landscape has been the loss of most of the understory vegetation, primarily due to the lack of maintenance. This has also led to soil erosion, creating the additional problem of the waterway becoming silted in. One area of the riverway was turned into a parking lot in the 1950s. In 2017, this area was reclaimed and replanted according to a design by landscape architect Marion Presley, which was based on Olmsted's original design of this part of the park. The riverway exists today mostly intact and serving its original purposes. Cars have replaced carriages on the Parkway Drive, and bicyclists have replaced horseback riders, but people still enjoy this historic green corridor much as they have for over a hundred years. The Charles River Embankment, or Waterfront Esplanade, along the Charles River was proposed in the 1870s and became part of Olmsted's plans for the Boston Park system. Over the years, the embankment has changed dramatically because of the construction of Memorial Drive and Storrow Drive along the Charles River in the 20th century. The new highways covered much of the historical corridor park and additional landfill created new park spaces on the other side of the roads, as seen here. One of the first areas of the embankment to be built, and one of the most innovative parks Olmsted designed, was Charles Bank, a small playground for children. It was built along the embankment in order to serve what was then the crowded West End neighborhood of Boston. This type of small park was a new idea at the time, and Olmsted's design was one of the first in the United States. Little remains of the historic landscape today, which was covered over by the construction of Storrow Drive and parking lots for the expansion of Massachusetts General Hospital in the 20th century. Much of Boston's old West End neighborhood is gone as well. This section of the historic landscape shows the small park on the river's edge. In the 20th century, as the park was covered over, additional landfill was used to create a new park, again on the other side of the highway, which today is known as Lederman Park, named for a doctor who lost his life in World War II. Today, Lederman Park is separated from Massachusetts General and the other institutions that are its principal neighbors. Programming of the Embankment Park today includes major concert events held at the Hatch Memorial Bandshell, built in 1940. This section shows the historic landscape, a narrow park esplanade along the river's edge, directly accessible to the streets of Back Bay. Today, a section drawn in this area shows the highway now separates the new park, which extends further into the river on filled land. Today, although difficult to access in many places, the embankment along the Back Bay neighborhood is a much loved and at times heavily used park corridor along the Charles River. 
The Charles River Embankment today is an important greenway offering river views and bike paths. The connected riverside parks of Boston provide a vital recreational and ecological corridor through the heart of the metropolitan region. As was the case with the Charles River Embankment, in the 20th century, many of the public landscapes of metropolitan Boston region were transformed to accommodate widespread ownership and use of automobiles. By mid-century, a network of widened highways, urban expressways, and new river crossings covered waterfronts and cut through public parks throughout the region. As parkways became commuter highways and streets were straightened and widened to serve higher volumes of traffic, much of the 19th century public realm was lost. In the 1960s, a corridor of land was acquired through southwest Boston in preparation for the extension of Interstate 95 directly through downtown. The land was purchased, thousands of people were evicted, and hundreds of buildings were demolished. The original I-95 plan called for an eight-lane highway to cut through Jamaica Plain, Forest Hills, and on into Boston. The proposed highway was to be a mix of at-grade and elevated road surface and would be an extension of Interstate 95. Many residents and officials began to react against policies that favored cars over people and the environment. By 1966, residents had learned of the plans for the massive expressway through their communities and demonstrated outside of the state capitol in Boston. By this point, thousands had been evicted and hundreds of buildings had already been demolished, but Governor Francis Sargent yielded to public pressure and called off the project. Interstate 95 was relocated along the existing Route 128 corridor around the city of Boston, where it is today. This left the already cleared Southwest Corridor from Forest Hills to Jamaica Plain to Back Bay downtown available for other purposes. Money that was to be spent on the highway was diverted for the improvement of the Orange Line T and the construction of new stations. Design of what would become the Southwest Corridor Park began in 1972. A number of designers and engineers collaborated with state park and transportation agencies to create a connected system of sitting areas, basketball courts, playgrounds, and a continuous bike path almost five miles long. The Southwest Corridor Park today represents another milestone in urban greenway design. In this case, a landscape that combines transit and neighborhood recreational facilities, replacing what was planned to be a major expressway through the heart of Boston. <laughs> The Rose Kennedy Greenway, completed in 2008, was another response to the automotive landscape of the mid-20th century. Downtown Boston historically was a congested area along the busy waterfront piers, characterized by narrow streets and businesses serving the port. The idea for an elevated highway through central Boston was first put forward as early as the 1920s, when automobiles first started to overwhelm the city. The Central Artery was an elevated urban expressway, a portion of Interstate 93 that was finally completed through downtown Boston in the 1950s. At the time, it was considered a powerful solution, a highway in the sky that would alleviate traffic congestion. The project required the demolition of about 1,000 buildings and the relocation of hundreds of people and businesses. This was the kind of urban destruction that protesters were able to stop 10 years later for the proposed Southwest Corridor Expressway. The Central Artery quickly became one of the busiest highways in Boston. By the 1980s, the elevated highway had become one of the most congested and accident-prone urban expressways in the entire country. At that time, planning began on one of the most ambitious highway projects in the United States, the so-called Big Dig. This massive project would eventually re-engineer much of the traffic through and around downtown Boston, as a part of the Big Dig, the elevated central artery through downtown Boston was put underground in a massive tunnel between 1991 and 2007. The result of the Big Dig was another major landmark in urban greenway design, the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Greenway, a series of linked parks on the roof covering the buried portion of the central artery. 
Completed in 2008, the Greenway is now a series of public parks designed by many of the leading landscape architects in practice today. The Allee of Parks hides the system of roadways dug beneath the surface and is also lined with surface roadways as well as roads that intersect through the green spaces, creating division among the parks. The Greenway is divided into five separate parks with each having different designers. Chinatown Park, Dewey Square Park, Fort Point Channel Park, Wharf District Park, and North End Park all have their own unique design features that correlate to their location and history. Chinatown Park was the first to be finished along the Greenway, located on the site of a previous on-ramp for the highway. The park, designed by CRJA Group, integrates features of Asian garden design. The southern portion of the park is a plaza that hosts events for the community and leads up to a serpentine path with dense vegetation of Asian origin for contemplative experience. Four Point Channel Park resides between Dewey Square and Wharf District Park. This portion of the Greenway has intensive focus towards horticulture. Designed by Halverson Design Group, plantings were carefully chosen to provide year-round appeal and was heavily influenced by residents in the area. Located on the once elevated highway, the two parcels of the North End Park serve as a gateway to the historic North End neighborhood. Designed by Crosby, Schlinger, Small Ridge LLC, and Gustafsson Jew 3 Nickel, these parks are the northern terminus of the Greenway. The Rose Kennedy Greenway is the latest example of innovative Greenway planning and design in the city of Boston. The design of the Greenway responded to the unique circumstances of the Big Dig project. The series of parks that make up the Greenway complement and connect to the communities around them. The project was completed in 2008 and is a partnership park managed by a conservancy nonprofit organization together with the city and state agencies. These examples of important Greenway design precedents in the Boston area served as the background for our studio to consider that Greenway planners for the metropolitan region aspire to accomplish for the future. Urban growth has continued and intensified in the Boston region, but it is now typically based in new technologies, educational institutions, and service sectors of the economy, rather than the industries of centuries past. Changes in the social and environmental fabric of the city have created a new context for urban greenway design in the 21st century. Greenway projects today often seek to rehabilitate abandoned industrial sites and waterfronts and use to provide new opportunities for healthful activities such as biking and walking that are increasingly popular with the people living in cities. The new social and urban context of Boston has led to new ideas for how Greenway planning can continue to be a vital part of urban design for the city. The Livable Streets Alliance, a private nonprofit dedicated to rethinking urban transportation, has responded to the current urban and social context of Boston by producing what they describe as an Emerald Network Plan, a 200-mile system of connected bikeways and corridor parks that connects and extends the existing greenways and parks of Boston. The darker green here shows the existing greenways that the Emerald Network connects and extends. The Emerald Network planners describe their goal, providing innovative and equitable transportation solutions to create safe, affordable, and convenient options for everyone in metropolitan Boston. This network relies on using different typologies of greenways, which range from bike lanes on existing roads and streets to new corridor park connections that will join and extend the region's existing parks and greenways. Integration with public transportation will increase intermodal transit and reduce vehicular traffic in the city. Boston is already well served by the existing park system, with most residents living within a 10-minute walking radius of green spaces. The proposed network will help fill in the few gaps that exist and promote even greater accessibility to parks and greenways. The Emerald Network proposal builds on the precedence of greenway planning in the Boston metropolitan area in a way that, 
once again, specifically responds to the contemporary social and urban contexts. Once again, innovative greenway planning is being practiced in Boston, the city where greenway planning began. As the next step in our studio, we identified areas that are ideal for the development of small parks, offering the ability to not only engage with recreational spaces, but also strengthen connections with the larger network. Designing these areas in revitalized public parks will help advance the Emerald Necklace into an Emerald Network, and will build on the existing systems of parks and connecting greenways that we have studied so far. Thank you for watching our video on the past, present, and future of greenway planning in the Boston metropolitan area. We will now move on to design the small park sites we have identified.